Right, this morning we're going to do some rear axle seals. Now, we have the 135 six speed axle here, and I've already pulled apart or stripped one of the 135 multi power rear axles. Now, the first thing you can notice is this one has studs in it, this one has bolts. Now, the 135 multi power, it's a later tractor than the 135 six speed as in the six speed has studs that come through the housing and hold your brake backing plate on where the later one with the straight front axle it has bolts that go through and hold in but apart from that they're the same housings they take the same kit and the axles are all the same as well there's no difference there so what some Wally's done here and instead of doing the job properly, they've, I don't know what's happened here, but they've actually welded the collars on, on this one, only on the left hand side. So that's going to cause us some problem. We're going to actually have to um, perhaps take this stud out and get in there and grind that off before we can split the collar and pull the whole thing off. So um, we'll do a video, a separate video for the multi-power tractor, um, the later one and a separate one for this. And look, that's just for the playlist, so someone can follow along on the playlist and um, yeah, it has continuity. Um, in both instances, I'm using the S5948, the Sparex S5948 seal kit or half shaft repair kit. I like to use that for a couple of reasons. One, that actually has the original leather type seal in it. And these are really tight and they are hard to get on, but I usually like to soak them in oil for as long as I can beforehand at least. Um, the kit also comes with two new, or a new shrink collar, an S5945 wheel bearing, that's a cup and cone, and it also comes with the seal for up the end of the trumpet housing, which is S5947. So it's a complete kit. Um, another thing I like about the kit is that we have a steel outer on the seal here. Now, the rubber outer seals, the TC seals we call them, look, they're just not my favorite thing. As they push in, sometimes a bit of rubber comes loose and things like that. So. Um, I like to use this kit because it has the steel on the outer of the seals, like this fella up over the back there. It has the leather dirt, dirt seal and that is tight to get on so you know there's no dirt going to get in here. And with this seal sitting up on the axle, it actually sits just on here. But with this outer seal here sitting on that sealing surface there, which is here on this one I've tidied up, um, and the leather outer, this is filled with grease and with that being filled with grease there's no chance, there shouldn't be any chance anyway of oil coming in this way or um, any intrusion of water or grease leaking out to the brakes or oil getting through both seals to the brakes. Now just a word of warning, this seal that goes up into the trumpet housing um, don't put that in until you've done your axle preload you know with your shims here because um, if you put that in then you're sliding the axle in and out and in and out half a dozen times to um, to get your actual end axle end float right that's easy for me to say um, to get the axle end float right well you have a chance of damaging the seal so um, get everything set up get the both axles in do your axle end float then pull both axles out once more and put the inner seal in and you only have to put a bit of grease on it and you only have to do that once so so I'll, I'll use this little piece of video oh there's another another thing I do is I always try and keep the left axle on the left and the right on the right now if you're not sure which was which I'll lift that up and I'll turn a light around here Now, if you can see there, 
This one here is a left hand axle. See the worn part just here? And this axle here on a 135, you'll see the extra worn piece here. Uh, not worn, but just a witness mark, and that's where the diff lock collar has sat. So, um, my theory behind all that is that if this axle's been used to going one way and flexing one way all the time, and you pop it in the other side, which you can do, it'll work, um, and you flex it the other way, it may just not like it. But look, whether I'm just doing something I don't need to do there, I don't know, but that's how I choose to do it. So, We'll drop back down, we'll clear the bench a little bit and we'll knock them over one at a time and I'll film one strip and one assembly of the of the multi-power tractor for the series and I'll do one of the six speed one as well for that series so stay tuned, we'll see what mischief we can get up to. Right, you can see on this six speed rear axle where they welded it, I've had to come in through here with the grinder. Now, look, what I've done, I've, you, you'll still see a little bit of weld up there, but I actually had to come in with a die grinder around through here and try and thin the weld in the corner without marking this surface here. Now, this surface here is where the inner seal sits, so we will polish that later, but if we can't get any more of that weld off, we'll just make sure it's flat with the outside and it won't make any difference really. So I've gone all the way around, so hopefully I've gone enough. So what we do now, to get the game going, is we have to drill down through this collar, right down through to the bearing, so drill down through here. And the drill will go down, but as soon as we get to the bottom bearing here, with the bearing being hard, it'll push up against the tit here and it'll just stop drilling. But what we don't want to do is actually drill through and, oh, you can't quite see that, but um, we don't want to drill through to where this collar goes on um, and mark it. And I've pulled many apart that have had a mark on there. It doesn't really make any difference, but it's all about doing the best job that you know how to. So if you just start drilling here, put it there and just start drilling, the drill always wants to wander off over towards that way. So I actually come out about two thirds of the way out and try and put a nice center pop mark there. And then we'll try and drill it out. Actually I'd like to come out a little bit further with that. I think it's too close there so I'll just try and your drill will always come on an angle because of the um, because of the chuck. I'll just go out a little bit wider here so you can see and the drill will always want to come wider well, on an angle so that first hole I did if I go there by the time that gets down look it may be all right but look let's just try this one And you see when the swath stopped coming, that tells us that the tip of the drill is right down touching on the bearing. So look, that's what we want. Now what I like to do is bring a coal chisel down in and try and split it. Now 
Now sometimes we can come down this way And we're trying to split it without actually going through and marking the inner surface. But like I say, if there's a slight mark there, you can file it down and it'll be okay. But we're probably going to have trouble here because of these welds. So So whether we got it down far enough to get it split properly, I'm not sure. Um, what I may do in this instance, which I don't normally have to do because it's not welded, but I may try, and we'll just drill through the back here. And get that extra surface split. I'm worried that's a bit close. I might go and find a smaller drill if I can. And the idea of that is if we run a pilot hole, it may not want to wander off. Okay, we'll try. Oh, we're getting a mess on this bench. There we go. Yeah, there's a little bit sticking out there, so I'll have to file that off, polish it off somehow, some around there. But I may, I may try and get in there with the file if I can, and just take the main little burr off that to pull the bearing off, and then I should be able to tidy it up a little bit better. So I'll take it far enough to get the bearing off, but yeah, that job should have taken like a couple of minutes. But anyway, that's what you get when you play with tractors. Right, now that we've got the collar off, I have filed around the surface a bit where they welded it on. I've got my puller plate that I made up a while ago. Um, I'm only using six bolts. I believe that should be enough. But look, if it gets tight, we'll put the extra ones on anyway. But um, normally half a dozen pulls them. We'll take it over to the press and we'll come back all set up over there. Okay, this is going to get real noisy. Now, I've got it in the press here. 
I've just taken a little bit of pressure there now and I've got a big hunk of board under the press so when the axle drops through we're safe so it doesn't damage the um, wheel studs so this will get noisy if it's too noisy I'll put a bit of music on after it or something but I've turned the compressor off so hopefully it's not too bad One axle out. So now I'll, I'll undo the axle flange or, or the, the bearing flange off the fixture there in the press and we'll give everything a wash up and have a look at what we got. Right, back over on the bench. I had to have a big clean up and that's our bearing that come out. We'll discard that. Now the bearing in here, it's got a couple of stain marks on it and on this other side around the back here they have the leather seal and the other lip so all that comes out. Um, the main axle here, I had to, I'll bring it down in where you can see it a little bit better, I had to get the die grinder and, and dress that down a little bit, there's still plenty of meat down here but I think I'll, I might just run a file through just to make sure there's no high spots for dropping the locking collar on and we'll polish this seal surface here. Um, the seal surface hasn't been damaged by the weld. We can see through the circuit there or the line of where the old seal used to wear, we're still okay. So I think we'll be okay. I'll, I'll go and get organized I've just cleaned this bench, look at the mess I've made. And um, yeah, we'll knock this bearing out and well look I may not even film that, I, I think we'll um, all we do is punch the bearing out one way and the seal out the other so hang tight, we'll see how much we film and what we don't. You... Well I thought bugger it, we're here now so <laughs> rather than shift all the camera over to a vice and muck around I, I brought it over here. So. These hunks of steel here, they're the bits that came with the press when I bought it. So, so they give us a fairly good base to hit down on. So now look, all I'm doing here is just bumping. That's got the rear seal out. And now we can turn him over. And you must be careful here that you don't just hook in. Excuse me for leaning across. See that little lip there? So you don't want to be hitting on that. You need to be hitting on where the bearing is. So The early tractors had a little cut out there for you to put your punch in, but these haven't. So you'll see the little edge just there. So if in doubt, Go and get the welder and weld all around there and it'll just shrink it out. Sounds like we have a jet coming over the top of us, so we'll see. But look, for the moment, I'll see if I can just bump this out. Must be a plane wanting to see what's going on in Bundy Bear's shed, I reckon. If we just go nice and gentle, I usually do this in a vice, but by the time we set lights in it up, I just thought I'd take a shortcut. Couple of hits each way. But yeah, if you've got this set up in the vice, that's as good as anything. You can see the gap coming in there. Okay, that's the bearing. I'm 
I'll try and show you what we've got there, so what it looks like. You can see the marks and the stains and all through there, so look, that's no good. A couple of those marks are where you, when you actually press it apart, you're actually pushing hard onto these rollers here. And even though you think you can probably use your bearings again, can you see if I can get it lined up? Yeah, see the line there and the line there. They're from actually pressing it apart just now. But look, a little trick. By the time we have to press the bearing back in there, we have to press a new one in. And we can't press very far here before we run out of room. So what I have is an old bearing. I've got it marked 35X. And I've actually put that on the grinder on a belt sander and I've ground that all the way down. So that can push the new bearing in nice and even. And by the time the new bearing sits in there, this will still have plenty of meat sticking above. So um, you can make yourself a pressing tool just, just by belt sanding or sanding or grinding, whatever you choose, around the outside of the bearing. And look, you've only got to do it enough that it just slides down into the bearing bore nice and easy. And when it comes to pressing, just put a bit of flat bar across the top or a disc or whatever you have in your workshop. So look, I'll go away now, I'll, I'll clean all this stuff up and we'll come back and we'll start assembly. Right, we're back over on the bench here now and I've given the housings all a bit of a clean up. Now, I do have presses, I, I have a big press that we press this apart in but then I have a little press as well but I'm going to just put it in with a hammer and a couple of tools here and the idea of that is to encourage you to have a go. If you haven't got all of the tools, um, you know, it may not be so bad. You, you may be able to get someone to press it apart or um, something like that. But what we need to do first up is I like to put the bearing in first. So we put a little bit of oil. I might come out a little bit wider just so I don't get out of, out of focus. So... The bearing goes the fat end down. And this, this ground down bearing that I spoke of before will come into its own shortly. But look, I have a disc of steel I've had for years. I have no idea where I come by it or anything like that. So to start off with, That's probably very loud for you, but um, that's got it down so far. Now, we can't really go any further. This little disc actually can go further, but for the purpose of this exercise, oh, I'll just get it down below. All right, so that's got it down a bit further, and this is where this ring comes in, the, the ground down bearing. So we should be able to now and look, you can use a bit of square here, a bit of flat plate, a bit of, bit of whatever you choose to use. And you can hear the sound change. That has the bearing right home. And without the seal in, we can look at this rear housing here and just make sure it's, it is right back. And it is. It's real good. So we'll move on to putting the seal in. Now, with the Sparex seal, we have the, the rubber lip with the spring on this side and the leather outer on this side. So, once again, a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil just stops it galling and helps it go in. You don't need any sealant out here. Something nice and flat once more. And we're looking to make sure it's even all the way around. Now 
Now we can see in through the back there, you can see the seals home all the way around and it's still just a tad proud out here. That's no worries, that's, um, that's how it's supposed to be. I'll just give that a bit of a wipe down, make sure it's nice and clean. So normally I would put that together in the press, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible just with a few hand tools. Um, I'm a bit lucky to have that, <laughs> and like I say, I don't know where I got it, but you know, if you can find yourself a nice bit of plate of some sort, um, it'll make the job easier. Okay, we'll put a bit of grease in here, and we'll move on to getting it down over the shaft. Now, this leather seal, like I said, it is tight. Um, and it's, look, it's a great thing. It's how they were originally. It's a good copy of the original seal. And if we run a bit of oil around down here, and of course the seal is a bit soft because I've been soaking it for, for days. But you'll find it's still very tight to get on. So sometimes I do press that on. I'm just trying to get the um, to get the seal down to where I'd like it to be and other times I'll get something and I'll try and try and roll the edge a little bit just to make it a little a little softer and help it over that edge. Now it's important with that edge there to make sure it's not sharp so we'll try and get it over there if we can without hitting the microphone too much And they are bloody hard to get on sometimes. I might sit that up in a vise so I can get it nice and even. Okay, I've just got the seal down over. And look, they are really tight. And, and what I use is, I'll see if I can get that to where you can see it. It's a screwdriver that's flat on one side and it's rounded the other and there's no sharp edges here and what I do I put the rounded side down and lever against the axle here like that and I just lever the leather back out a little bit and that seems to work and you know, but it'll start one side then you just lever it around lever it around and the the blunt side here is so I don't damage the rubber seal now this isn't going to leak oil anyway but you still don't want to damage anything so by getting that, by levering the leather out, that gets us down close. So we should be able to, there we go. And once that's pushed down like that, that's fine. This lip will have a bit of grease. We've got a bit of oil there to get the seal going originally. And I think that'll be okay. So next up, we heat this bearing up and we bring him down. And he actually goes and sits right on this back shoulder here. We need to make sure that back shoulder is nice and clean. And we heat this up in the oil and away we go. But Look, because we're going to do, I'm doing a run of axles all together, I'll get all the other axles to this stage and then we'll drop the bearings on and do the heating with the oxy to, to, um, to get the shrink ring all back on. Well, we're all set up here. I have the axle off the six speed and the axle off the multi-power. Now, this little section of the video will put on both um, both playlists but over here I have a Sunbeam deep fryer it's a chip cooker and in the basket here I have a couple of bearings sitting there and I find on this particular one I turn it flat out and there's a little indicator light down there and once it cycles on and off a few times um, and I usually let it go three times I know that if the bearings went in there originally um, they should be plenty hot enough 
and we always need to have a punch and a hammer ready just to make sure so I'll just let that cycle once more just so I know I've got plenty of heat in there now I've had it out but normally they'll just drop over but on this one here I don't know it feels okay but perhaps I have a little high spot and I might have to just tap it down just tap it right home so we'll just wait a second until it cycles once more and we know everything's right up on top temperature you can see the oil stirring around I have the basket to keep it up off the bottom so it's has a, it's just the oil transferring the heat now I just use transmission oil in there whatever oil you like to choose it just doesn't matter the oil's just a medium to transfer the heat there we go so That's um There we go. Once it got past the burr it was okay, so that tells me on this six speed where those welds are, there's sli it's slightly higher somewhere. So I'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, on the multi power, we'll let it cycle again. Whoop, might matter, might help if I turn the bearing up the right way. I need to turn them over like that again. And I'll just wait until the light goes out and it's just gone out now. So we know we're right up on full full heat. This bearing here. There we go. That's how it should go. Job done. Okay, we'll let those two cool down now and we'll get ready to grab the heat or grab the shrink collars now the collars are here and now we have to get these red hot and we use an oxyacetylene torch for that and we let that drop down over here and that locks the bearing in place, so no need to weld like this one.
Okay, and there we go. That's right down. So that's it. That's all we need to do here. The, um, the axle is done. Now, before we put the seal in the trumpet housing, like I said earlier, we'll set the end, end play on the axle, but that'll be in another video. And um, Because there is an oil seal here, and an oil seal down inside there, the heat won't transfer, um, the heat from the shaft here doesn't transfer down and damage the seal in any way, but what I do from here is I fill that cavity with a good quality grease, and I do see people put a grease nipple, uh, put a grease track in through here, and when they do it sort of comes in through here, and it ends up in this cavity, but there's no real need to do that because you have trapped grease, put plenty in and you're not going to need to play anymore. It'll just, um, it'll be trapped in there and a good quality grease is not going to burn out or anything like that. As far as a mechanical item goes, this is a slow turning um, mechanical item. So um, we'll get this back ready to go. I'll wrap it up in a rag once it cools down and we'll wrap it up, fill it up with grease and that'll be ready to go in. So I've got a couple more to do. I better get into it.